services they need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for Thornhill. Another day and more horror stories from Canada's airports. While the Minister of Transport blamed out of practice travellers for the bottlenecks at those airports, the Parliamentary Secretary now says that it's a global phenomenon. It's not. The government has not acknowledged any responsibility. They still haven't shared any specific advice they claim to have for the restrictions in the airports. When will the government apologize to all of the travellers who have missed their flights due to their incompetence? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we understand how frustrating it is for Canadians to experience long lines and delays at airports. Uh, Canadians can rest assured that we are working to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. And as I said earlier in the House today, we have hired approximately 400 new screening officers that are currently in different phases of their training across the country. We are taking affirmative action by forming working groups with CATSA and CBSA, PHAC and other aviation partners, and they are meeting multiple multiple times a week to find and address the bottlenecks leading to these delays. We ask that Canadians remain patient as we work hard with CATSA and their air sector to find a solution. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. The airports across the country are still grinding to a halt, and this government says that it's your fault. The, the people who are waiting months and months for passport, well, the government tells them you have to line up at 4 a.m. Basic government services, the government says, sorry, take a number. The parliamentary secretary has said testing 4,000 travellers a day and keeping 4 million Canadians from domestic travel is based on public health advice. Mm -hmm. I have one question. What specific advice has she seen that nobody in this House has? Here, here. Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to acknowledge that after two years of staying home, of making sure that they're doing everything they can to protect themselves and their loved ones, Canadians now want to travel. And we understand that there is a huge demand and there are unprecedented volumes, in fact, volumes that we haven't seen since 2006 when the United States asked Canadians to have a passport to travel there. We are doing everything we possibly can to ensure that Canadians can access those services in a timely fashion and we'll continue to maintain these measures so that Canadians can have access to these services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.